What's up everybody, this is Ambro with AMBG and today we're going to talk about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. This is a spin-off of the Borderlands franchise from Gearbox Software and is releasing on March 25th, 2022 for the Xbox One and Series family of consoles, PS4, PS5, and PC through Steam and Epic for retail price of $59.99 US. In this video, we're going to go over a brief overview of Wonderlands and some specifics on elements of the game. We'll talk about what we know about the classes, the RPG elements, weapons, combat, and more. Let's get right into it. Here are six things you need to know about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Remember that if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out and I would greatly appreciate it. So it may seem like a big change for those that have only played the mainline games in the Borderlands series. After all, a full-on fantasy setting is a deviation from the cycle-filled wasteland of the mainline games. However, those that played through Borderlands 2's expansions will know that this isn't the first time that the series has actually experimented with a more fantasy approach. In fact, its first attempt could be viewed as the main reason that Wonderlands is even happening. Tiny Tina's assault on Dragon Keep saw everyone's favorite corporation-hating, explosion-loving character creating a Bunkers and Badasses campaign for the Vault Hunters. This was meant to be Dungeons and & Dragons, and the made-up story was full of hilarious twists and turns as well as some serious moments. It worked well because of this balance, and its gameplay offered a lot of new enemies to keep things fresh. It even had an official board game come out for it, I'm not kidding. This DLC was one of the favorites for fans of the franchise and for good reason. Uh, just a heads up, this game will be cooperative, however crossplay is unknown at this time. Uh, considering how long it took for Gearbox to get crossplay for Borderlands 3 and the fact that it didn't include PlayStation doesn't instill much confidence for this entry, but, you know, fingers crossed. You also do not need to have played any other game in the Borderlands franchise to enjoy this game. This game is a standalone experience, however, it would obviously help to know about Tiny Tina, who first debuted in Borderlands 2, which came out in 2012, almost 10 years ago. Oh God, I'm getting so old. Tiny Tina, from the first moment you meet her, it's easy to see why she was one of the fan favorites. She is almost like a violent, crazier, traumatized version of Louise Belcher from Bob's Burgers, at least that's how I kind of see it. She's devilish, she's imaginative, she's crazy, and has her reasons for being so, and she's violent as anything. All around the stag just plant, the stalker chased the bandit, the stalker thought was all in fun. Ha! Again, the game is heavily inspired from Dungeons & Dragons, but you do not have to have played D&D to play this game by any means. Anyway, let's get into some of what you need to know. Number one is create a character. This is the first game in the Borderlands franchise that will allow you to create a character entirely from scratch. Again, using D&D as a template, being able to create your own character was something the developer really wanted to give you. So if you wanted to be a tiny dwarf looking character that swings a giant hammer and has an orange beard, you can do that. You want to be a giant orc with fins on your side and has pink shoes who uses magic? You can do that too. In a lot of games, when you pick a character, you're often locked into that character and however they look. That is not the case here. You're going to have the freedom to create the character that you want. To what level of detail, we'll have to see. My hopes are on an orc with fins on their sides or something. So it has been confirmed that there will be six different classes that you can take your created character down that path. The devs have said that there are two aspects to character creation. One is the aesthetic piece, or simply how your character looks, but the other piece is your class that you choose. For fans of the Borderlands franchise, there will be a lot of familiarity here with some of the abilities. However, as you get deeper into the game, you have the ability to go multi-class, which is something we've definitely not seen in the mainline games. You initially choose your primary class, and then later on in the story, you'll be able to choose a secondary class, and then you can mix and match the skills for those two classes. After the main story, you'll be able to go back and re-spec your secondary class if you so choose. You'll be stuck with the primary class, however, so it's just something to keep in mind. This seems like a game that will give you a ton of flexibility in what characters you create, and give you that sense of freedom that the mainline games just don't. They also dropped a trailer recently to showcase the Stabamancer class, which looks like a stealth rogue type class. 
You know, that kind of like glass cannon that does tons of damage, but you know, will get killed after a few hits. This class focuses on super high damage output and then lurk back into the shadows to strike again. We'll talk about more about combat as a whole in just a minute, but you can see that this class has a higher damage output when attacking from a stealth status. On the flip side, if you just want to go in guns blazing or hammer or axe blazing, you can use the Berserker class and you can just essentially yeet yourself at enemies with this ground pound attack, which looks really cool. Speaking of combat, let's talk a little bit about what we do know. For anyone who's played Borderlands, you're gonna have a pretty good idea of what to expect from the guns. The guns are gonna be crazy and zany as always. They'll have different elements tied to them, different rates of fire, and different methods of damage. However, a new focus for the game is also spells and melee combat. In a game inspired by D&D, this makes a lot of sense that the devs would go down this route. In some of the trailer footage that you may actually be seeing throughout this video, or just on the internet in general, you can see that there are spells that target a single enemy meant to really dish out damage, as well as some area of effect crowd control spells like this spell that freezes the enemies in place. What's still yet to be determined is what is required to use these spells. Are they going to just be a checkbox that you put in a skill point and you get that ability? Or is there going to be some sort of skill check before you can actually use the ability? Perhaps you'll actually get the ability after uh, you allocate skill points into that skill tree and there's this actual skill check for it. And maybe even as you allocate points into a certain tree, the effect will last longer. We're gonna have to wait and see on that part. There can also be parts of the trailer that show off a character using a magic wand and even their own hand to cast some magic. And speaking of cool spells, we're seeing a huge range of spells in the trailer. You can see an ice meteor shower, you can see some sort of like dark energy pulse that's give that like dark magic vibe, and even a fire spell that launches enemies into the air. These honestly look so cool and I cannot wait to try them. Some other class skills that we can see in particular, uh, going back to that Berserker class skill, like the Whirlwind attack where the character spins around in a circle while spinning their axe doing major area of effect damage. This trailer also showcased that the abilities themselves have elements attached to them. I think you can get the idea, Berserker, right? He's got like a frost and ice type damage tied to him and it's infused with his attacks. You can see a lot of examples of this in the trailer. I'm not gonna go over every single one, but just keep a close eye on it and you'll be able to pick them out for yourself. This game is also going to be way less focused on guns and more on the fantasy element, which is a welcome departure from the mainline games. The devs have said that you're gonna be able to hold a melee weapon permanently as a secondary weapon, and that melee is going to be a lot more than just spamming one button. They wanted to make sure that with this more melee focused approach than anything else in the Borderlands franchise so far, that this has some depth to it. To what extent, we're gonna have to wait and see. It's really nice to hear this because in a lot of games, when you're just pressing the same buttons over and over, it can get really tiring and repetitive. In the most recent trailer, you can actually see this icon that appears after using the Stabomancer's From the Shadows ability, and these icons are going to be part of a special mechanic that can be tied to things like skill cooldowns or perhaps even give you some ammo back. I'm super excited to try this out for myself. Despite what fans may have said about Borderlands 3, especially in regards to its story and characters, Gearbox absolutely nailed the combat and movement in Borderlands 3. The guns were unique and felt amazing. Abilities and skills felt powerful and impactful. But all you ever really used were guns. It's really just been about guns up to this point, so I'm really excited to try out a more fantasy-focused approach. Gearbox has decided to stick with its procedurally generated loot, which basically means an endless combination of tweaks to weapons. For example, after a fight, the enemy may drop two of the same exact assault rifle, but one of them has a higher critical hit chance and does fire damage, whereas the other one is burst fire and does ice damage. Number four are hero points. So let's just back up for a minute and make sure that this is clear. Along with skill points that will help you unlock new moves and abilities, you will also have hero points to spend along the way that you can allocate into strength, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, constitution, and attunement. Hero points help you flesh out your character more towards a specific class. So again, skill points unlock new moves and abilities. Hero points will increase things like a melee attribute or a skill cooldown attribute, which will again 
help you along that path of creating a unique class. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that strength will be geared towards up close melee damage, intelligence will most likely increase ranged attack damage, and that constitution will increase max health points. Gearbox may add their own twists and tweaks to this established formula, but I'm not gonna put my money on it. Number five is luck. Now, one thing that has been a part of the Borderlands franchise since its inception is looting. Looting is a massive part of the franchise and the experience, and along with looting comes rarity. This is based on a color-coded system that you're probably familiar with. Gray for common weapons, green for uncommon, blue for rare, purple for epic, and gold for legendary. One more attribute that is geared towards the endgame is your luck. Luck determines loot rarity, so as you play through the game, your luck will increase, and the more your luck increases, the higher your chances are for getting higher tier loot. This isn't really anything new to the looter franchise, but it's nice to know that it's here. Number six is exploration, and arguably the biggest change from the mainline games. So the newest addition to the franchise is the use of an overworld for traversal and exploration. What's going to happen is you're going to get pulled out into a third person point of view and you can run around the overworld to navigate the map. There are also going to be enemies roaming the overworld and you have a few options here. You can simply run into them and just start the combat encounter which will pull you back into that first person point of view. You'll fight, you'll loot, you'll gain XP and then you'll move on. On the flip side, you have the option to actually slash and swing your weapon and attack the enemy in the overworld which will actually avoid the encounter altogether but it will also stop you from getting any loot that the enemies would have dropped. This is an interesting twist on this mechanic as normally when you see this in games, when you attack the enemy on the overworld, it gives you some sort of advantage in the fight, like having done damage already, or in turn-based games, it gives you the first move. I'm looking at you, Persona and Octopath Traveler, which by the way are great games, go play them. Borderlands has always used big segmented maps for its exploration with a central hub type area being sanctuary where you can upgrade your character, buy ammo, health packs, and so on. The devs have also mentioned that within the overworld area there are going to be side paths that take you to different areas, but the cool thing here is that these side areas will actually act as separate modules from the main story. They're actually self-contained stories that you can do. They're optional, you don't have to do them, but they're there for completionists or just those who want to experience everything the game has to offer. One last thing here, there's actually going to be chest and collectibles in the overworld as well to encourage exploration, which is always awesome. So anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. I am super stoked for this game. As a huge fan of the Borderlands franchise and a huge lover of RPGs in general, this game ticks off all the boxes on my list. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down, uh, no skin off my back. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts on the game. I personally think Gearbox has the talent to pull this off, but I'm cautiously optimistic. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter or just comment down below and let me know if there's any other games that you guys would like to see me cover. I'll catch you next time.